proyecto dedicado a Road Leaks. Llamamos a Louis Poussignon. Louis va a presentar análisis de eventos e incidentes de ruteo recientes en Latinoamérica. Louis es ingeniero de software de red en Cloudflare desde el 2016, originario de Francia. Ha estado mejorando la recopilación y el procesamiento de datos de red a escala, lujo y BGP. Las herramientas se utilizan actualmente para la inteligencia empresarial y la ingeniería de tráfico. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Today, thank you for joining this talk. Um, I'm from I'm Louis from Cloudflare. We have a global network, and we see many things going on the internet. And today I'm just going to talk about what we learned, all the teachings from the route leaks, and the best, best practice. So let's start with a quick introduction. In 1977, it was the ancestor of the internet, ARPANET. It was small. There was no need for routing security. It was one company. In 1981, it's the first definition of IP. You have PGP, which define also exchanging the route. And you only had a security option. Like security was optional. Ten years later, the World Wide Web comes in. In 1991, BGP3 still no security. It's not discussed in the specification. The internet was still small 30 years ago. But what was insecure yesterday is secure today. They are practice. They are things to make sure that you exchange the right and you say what you say, you, you, who you are, is actually validated. Today, there's security. There's cryptography inside exchanging the routes. So you verify and you encrypt. So now there's 1 billion IP addresses that are used, 700,000 routes, 65,000 S numbers on the internet. And all of this is you, you can enter in databases, you can enter records that says that will be validated with this. So when there's an issue, a security issue, it appears in the press. Verizon blamed for cascading catastrophic failure. Department of Homeland Security in the US security alerts about recent DNS hijacking issues. Google traffic hijacked by a Nigerian ISP. All of this, every time we have security, but it happens, it still happens. So let's talk about BGP. BGP is also is the protocol that exchanged the routes. It's, it may cause leaks. So in 1997, that's probably the oldest incident of BGP route leak ever. It was very recent. It, like CIDRs, classless um, domain writing, like IPs, the prefixes, were four years old before you had class IPs. And in 1997, a bug in a router caused a de-aggregation of prefixes. What was a slash 23 became slash 24, and it attracted traffic. In 2008, Pakistan Telecom hijacks YouTube. This one is a very common example, comes out every once in a while. It was supposed to be a, um, like a censorship from the Pakistan government of YouTube, and Pakistan Telecom created more specifics. Those ones were leaked to the internet and therefore attracted the traffic, making it unavailable for everyone, not just Pakistan Telecom. Two years later, Malaysia Telecom leaks the whole internet to level three. That's the first, that's one of the first where a big player, level three, accepts all the all the routes and redirects most of the traffic to Malaysia Telecom. 2017, um, Google leaks routes to Verizon. And it shows the butterfly effect. Like, it's, the leak was done in Chicago, but it affected users in Japan. 
it's a global network. This is why a single route change can affect the other side of the world. In 2018, main, we, main one, a cable provider in Africa, leaks Google, Cloudflare, and a few others. They leak it to China Telecom. And therefore, since now it's China, it kind of looks suspicious a bit. Like, is it legit? Is it a mistake? And in 2019, um, a recent one affected Cloudflare and a few others due to a BGP optimizer. So what happened June 24, 2019? So a few months ago, the news come up, Cloudflare issues, internet outage. But what really happened? So there was a leak by Verizon, and it affected Cloudflare and a few others. Um, this is Cdexis. This is a report by Cdexis that determines the performance of a of network like of content de distribution network like us, like Google, like Limelight. And during the two hours, um, there was many disruptions. Like as you can see, the the graph is very wobbly. The Cloudflare traffic. This is our, our data. We lost 15% of our traffic that day. 15%, that means 15% of either our prefixes were unreachable, or 15% of the users of the internet could not reach us. How did it get solved? Not really automated scripts, but phone calls. Phone calls. We had to call DQE. DQE was the ASP that deaggregated some of our routes and announced them to Verizon. By calling it, <clears throat> we, we reached DQE and told them to stop announcing those routes. Verizon, we tried to reach Verizon because DQE was announcing those routes to Verizon, and Verizon was like a tier one, very interconnected, and suddenly the, the more specific became, white, became the most the preferred routes instead of us. So we reached DQE, and the problem was solved in two hours. But what? Oops. So, what is a BGP leak? There's a RFC that defines it. What does it look like on the internet? Well, this is an example. You can see one of our routes. And let's take a look at the AS pass. The AS pass is going to be which network are going to pass the traffic. So you can see us, 1335, Cloudflare. And then level 3, 3356. And, and then the ISP. And then Verizon. This is strange because Verizon should not be re announcing route from uh, Allegheny te um, Technologies, nor should come from uh, level 3. And what says it's invalid as well is like, this is a ROA. This is the cryptographic record that we created. It says our rod should only be announced as a slash 20. And if you look back again, it's a slash 21. It should not be on the internet. So it's really invalid. This is, it should not, it should not be accepted. But tier ones are very well interconnected. So they announce the rod to all their peers and people will believe them. So suddenly, it was going through not Cloudflare. We lost the traffic. It was redirected somewhere else. So what are the solutions? Um, what's a simple filtering? There's peer lock. Peer lock is, would be for tier ones, like the, the big players. They should reject the route if it comes from one of their peers. And if there's, uh, like, for instance, 174 is cogent. And level three is way back in the AS path. This kind of route, should, like, can, could we create some filters to refuse this kind of route, this kind of behavior? This should not appear. Um, so Yop Snyders from NTT wrote Practical BGP, a document that says how you can create those filters. So peer lock is explained by this. Tier ones are all interconnected to each other. So that means a customer prefix coming from level three should directly reach cogent, not go through Verizon, and then cogent. Doesn't make sense. This is the peer lock. And 
What about BGP optimizer? Because originally the route was still generated by something. BGP optimizer aggregates BGP prefixes in order to do traffic engineering, to load balance the traffic. If you have two, two transit link, maybe you can set a route that's going to send a part of your traffic based, um, but you have to use more specific. So the problem is if you leak those fake routes, since it's more specific, it became the favorite route. Everyone, not just to you. So this is the slash 21 that appeared, and this is the invalid route. In our view, is there any best practice? We advise not to use BGP optimizer. They do cause fake route, and it's even worse when they leak them by default. In the configuration, there's a BGP community called no export. That means it should not be re-announced to your transit providers, and they should not re-announce it. Um, by default, there's, not, there's no community like this. So it's a risk. The response was this. In fact, the use of more specific prefixes is only going to increase no matter if a network uses any BGP tools or not. But that increases. That, that increases the chance of a leak. So what can you do about it? Um, there are good practices, so manners on manners.org. Um, they give good practices. They talk about RPI. They talk about filtering. Um, there's a lot of resources on this website. And you can join. You can say that you're going to respect those practices. And there's also IR filtering, which is easier said than done because it's static filters usually. It's how often should you update them? Like what happens if there's a update in your peers and transit. How often should you update it? Which database should you use? How do you, how do you know you can trust this database? Is there any automation that could be done? Are you going to enter every single filter? Probably not. And how do you deliver feedback from your peers? Like, how do you let them troubleshoot that? Why did you drop my route? 2018 and 2019 are big years for routing security because there's a lot of leaks and now it's very risky. We, we cannot let 15% of our traffic go away by a simple mistake. We have, we deployed RPKI. We issued ROAS, which are the cryptographically secure uh, records that says all oh, routes should be this. Or 111 resolver, which is also sensitive to leaks. It's signed. We signed our DNS, DNS authorities. We signed all of our routes the one that we could. NTT now treats ROA as if they were IR objects. So there's retro compatibility. AT&T in the United States and KPN are dropping RPK invalids and many others. There's transit provider that said they are gonna, going to deploy. Tilia recently deployed RPKI and they're starting to drop routes. And they're progressively increasing the deployment. Hundreds of networks have joined Manners, and Google said they were going to even start filtering routes in 2019. So that means Google will not accept the leaks. Google will still be able to reach um, a, leaked, um, a leaked ISP. And Arin also allowed the integration of its contract into RPKI software workflows. We'll come back to it a bit later. And this was one of the issues with RPKI. So in Africa, I just want to talk about like this iron thing that we saw earlier. In Africa, the leak still went through, even though Work Online, which deployed RPKI, accepted the leak. The main reason is, so why did it didn't work? Is the main reason is because they're not using the iron trust anchor. The trust anchor is going to be this source of the database validate your prefixes. Since our prefixes are in the ARIN region, we signed it on ARIN. But if you don't get the prefixes from ARIN, well, you don't know which one are true. So they do RPK filtering, but not completely. So the leak still got accepted in some part in the network that did not accept this ARIN uh, database. So 
Um, there was a study done by uh, Penn Law, University of Penn, and it describes the legal implication because of like how do you how can you use this database? How can you use the Arin database? Uh, Arin is the only one uh, is only one of the five rare to do that. It's the only one. And if you're gonna deploy RPKI, this is usually what happens, and this is why you should deploy it. This is the effect on having filtering. You sh if you're gonna deploy RPKI, you should do it with all the rails, like with all the databases. Drop the invalid prefixes, because this is what we saw. This is on the left, this is at and and on the right, this was Verizon. Verizon rerouted the traffic. Huge drop. Most of the ISP lost traffic. And on the left, there's at and and TNT was doing basic filtering and therefore kept having perfect service to Cloudflare. They were not part of the 15%. So at and said they were rejecting. This is the tweet. This, this was major. This is the first time big ISP was doing that. This is the number of ROAs in the LACNIC region. This is the records. There's around 7,000 records in LACNIC region. It's approximately the same amount of ROAs as ARIN. But to give you an example, RIPE, which is one of the, one of the region which has the most signed prefixes, they have 70,000. So please sign your prefixes. Even if you're not doing filtering yet, sign your prefixes. It will help others not to, not to be not to accepting the leaks to your to your ISP. So now I'd like to thank you and uh, do you have any questions? Gracias, Luis. Uh, my preguntas para Luis. How did you get Chuck Norris to call? So can you say again? Did I get Chuck Norris too? To call. The uh, to call. It was hard, but we managed to get him. <laughs> it's our secret. Bueno, si no hay preguntas, le agradecemos a Luis. Thank you.